Welcome to worship this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. You're so welcome as we hear God's word for us, as we receive God's word of forgiveness for us through Holy Communion. Uh, today on this Veterans Day weekend, communion is a part of our worship. And uh, for those who need gluten-free bread, it'll be available here at this station on the left. And uh, we will also have wheat bread. There is grape juice in the center of our trays and wine on the external circles. And we make our way back to our seats on the outside aisles. The ushers will direct you at that time. Uh, and the flowers here in the front of the church are in memory of Chuck Green, uh, whose funeral was held here yesterday in the morning. Uh, so I ask that you continue to pray for uh, his wife, Phyllis, uh, the Costellos and the Carviews as they mourn his loss. And these flowers are in memory of Marie Tweeten, whose funeral was also held yesterday morning uh, at Maranatha uh, in Glendon. And so please do uh, pray for the DeVeres as uh, they mourn uh, their mom and grandma's loss. Uh, this Friday and Saturday, Friday night is the visitation for Bonnie Warner from here from 5 to 7. Prayer service is at 7 o'clock and uh, her funeral will be uh, at 11 o'clock on Saturday morning. Uh, and today, so come take a little peek back here, uh, today during children's message, uh, we are going to have a time of prayer and dedication for our new build. Uh, we are able to have, the foundation is at 80% right now, and we should finish it up uh, the second the state plumbing permit arrives. We're on week 10 of our wait uh, right now. Uh, so please pray for a state plumbing permit for commercial property. <laughs> We're very specific in our prayers this week. Uh, and so we'll have a moment of prayer and dedication. Uh, and at this time, I invite you to stand as we praise our Lord. Blessed be God, the one who forms us, Jesus who bears the cross, and the spirit who makes our joy complete. If we have died with Christ, we will also live with Christ. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and our neighbors. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others. For the harm we have caused, known and unknown, forgive us. For the unjust demands we place on others in your creation, forgive us. 
For the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor, forgive us. Lead us back to you and set us on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are already and always forgiven. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together. O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated in boys and girls and probably even like teenager E-types. Uh, I need a little help. Come on back. All right. Yep. So we are going to give every household um, one of these. What it is, is when they broke ground, the big construction equipment was awesome. Um, and so bring one of these and help pass them out to every single home in the church. Everybody should get one. And if it's a big family, make sure they have two because we're going to pray the prayer on the prayer card together. And so you can grab the buckets. Yep, get them all spread out. Yep, grab buckets and just start heading out into the church. Thank you. Yep, but you got to scoot. Yep. Oops, sorry. So raise your hand if your household still needs some dirt. All right, then come on back here, boys and girls. I want you to so come grab these shovels and give a little feel for this dirt here. Ugh. Yep, give it a try. Yep, see how hard it is, and then pass it to somebody else. Yep, let everybody feel. It is very hard. So we had, we still have cool construction equipment out here every day, uh, and they have dug a big hole. Yep, and they brought in 10,000 pounds of sand because uh, we needed more sand. Yep, let, yep, let everybody have a try. Yeah. Yep, he gets a try too. Uh, and what is wonderful is this has only happened. We're only having um, the roof is fixed already on our church and we are two weeks away from having the Sunday school classrooms in the back. Whoa. I know. <laughs> We're just for two weeks away from having more space. Uh, and it's only happened because so many people have prayed for our church. And so many of people have prayed for one big thing. Um, and it's a cool thing. Do you know what the big cool thing is? It is cool that we're getting more space, but it's the why behind it. What, Clara? There is more space to praise God. You are right. Um, and the big, big thing is why we're doing this, why people are working so hard, uh, and why people are praying and why people are paying for it. Um, we are doing this so more people get to hear the good news of Jesus here. We know that our area is growing, and so we are in the blessed position to be able to tell people about God. Okay, so put up your fingers. One, we are in the good position to tell people that God loves you and that God forgives you. And that's why we're here, boys and girls. This is the big stuff, those two reasons. God loves you, God forgives you, and because of that, we get to live our lives as his people. Um, and that's why we're here. Yeah, exactly. Um, he lives his life, we live our lives. Yep. <laughs> That's how we live with God. It's true. 
Um, and so congregation, why don't you grab your cards and what I would like you to do with these is put them somewhere kind of obnoxious in your house so it, you will see it and you will remember to pray. Um, we have construction workers out here every single day and we need prayers for the next six months for them um, and for our build that people will hear the good news of Jesus here. So let's pray this prayer of dedication together. So um, if you're a reader, it's on the card, yep, right there, and it starts with Almighty God. Let's pray together. Almighty God, your Holy Spirit is leading our church into the future. Grant safety to all who work on our building. Give us all lives built on faith and love in Christ so that all who enter this place may know Jesus' love. Amen. Thanks for coming up, boys and girls. Yep. And we'll continue with our lessons for today, and the first lesson comes from Psalm 70. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me, O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those be put to shame and confusion who seek my life. Let those be turned back and brought to dishonor who desire to hurt me. Let those who say, aha, aha, turn back because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. But I am poor and needy. Hasten to me, O God, you are my help and my deliverer. O Lord, do not delay. The word of the Lord. Our second lesson comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him all those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Please rise. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there, there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Amen. Please be seated. 
So in today's gospel, there are ten bridesmaids. You know, and being asked to be a bridesmaid was, was really a great honor. So we're all taken by surprise by the sheer laziness and the carelessness by some of the bridesmaids in the story. Their main role was to provide light for this procession that went from the bride, bridesmaid's home to the groom's parents' home. And it was a light that would, they would process there too, and it was a light that would be used at the wedding and at the banquet. So without their light, everybody would be left in the dark. So making sure you had enough oil for your lamp was critical. But it wasn't complicated. In fact, it was just a small thing to remember and to do. I mean, olive oil was cheap, it was plentiful, if they were out of uh, oil at home, all they had to do was knock on somebody's door and their neighbor would have been glad to have helped. So it really wouldn't have taken much thought or effort to make sure that they were ready. And yet out of ten bridesmaids, five were only faithful to do this one small thing that in the end had larger implications in their life and for the life of the community. And in this story, it's not so much that they failed to stay awake. They're scrambling the, in that moment when the bridegroom shows up and uh, was more about the fact that some hadn't been faithful in that one small but important detail. So for me, at the heart of this parable of the kingdom of God is faithfulness. And it's very close uh, to another parable that Jesus tells in Matthew of the father and the two sons. Uh, this father went to his first son and he said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. And the son said, I will not. But later he changed his mind and he went. Then the father went to the second son and said the same. And he said, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the father, Jesus asked. So the answer is obvious the son who said he wouldn't go, but did go. I think that's the first thing to take note of about faithfulness. Faithfulness does not happen because we're perfect people. It's about showing up even though we didn't want to. It's about how we live into God's will even though our little old sinful selves are contrary to God's will, fighting and complaining all the way. And Psalm 70 recognizes that truth about ourselves, when he writes, I am poor and needy, hasten to me, O God, you are my help and my deliverer. Lord, do not delay coming. So like the psalmist, we all long for God's coming, but only because it is the nature of God to be faithful to us in all things most especially because we are poor and needy and even though we have failed God miserably. So this morning I brought uh, this leather belt because for me it's become a symbol of faithfulness. And I've had this belt for over 35 years now because once upon a time it was my grandpa's belt, my mother's father, Tom Dvorak. Uh, this belt was made to fit a size 38. Uh, Grandpa wasn't a big man, but, you know, we male types tend to put on the pounds around the middle as we get older. And so I had to take a sharp knife. If you look closely, I had to cut slits where there were none before because I've been trying real hard to grow into that belt. <laughs> Not so much in pounds and inches, but in terms of faithfulness. And I still remember the day that he took me down to his basement where he had this tin locker. And I was just a young boy. And one day he pulled out of that locker a pair of old leather boots that he had for 40 years. And though worn, they were still polished and ready to use. And then he said to me, Danny boy, take good care of the things that you have. So Grandpa died some years ago now, but I remember just like yesterday, the last time that I saw him in the hospital. 
he said to me, this is no life for me, Danny boy, with this raspy voice that I'd come to love so much. He'd been calling me Danny boy as long as I could remember. And as I stood beside his bed in the hospital in Minneapolis, Minneapolis, I watched the tubes that went up through his nose, and I watched Grandpa cough, and I watched him struggle for his next breath, and I said, no, Grandpa, this is no life for you. I didn't want to be there in that hospital. I wanted to be in a boat with him on one of those 10,000 lakes Minnesota is so famous for, just like we'd done so many times in my childhood. And I wanted to hear the pounding of the waves in the bows of, of his fishing boat and watch the waters of Milax spray into his brown Czechoslovakian face. And I wanted to hear the sizzling of bluegills in his frying pan. And I wanted to see the sun shine down on his strong, hairy arms. And I wanted to see his crooked teeth as he smiled beneath a nose that was equally crooked from his boxing career in the Golden Gloves as a young man. And I wanted to sit with him one more time and watch the twins play at the old Met at Bloomington. And I wanted to see his soft shoe routine that he did occasionally for me privately in the basement of his home. And there were so many things I wanted, but sitting in a hospital with Grandpa with a tube up his nose was not one of them. And his words that evening broke my heart. This is no life for me, Danny boy. And though I was a pastor in my first parish, I couldn't find a prayer for Grandpa in that moment, nor could I utter the promises that I held in my heart for him. Promises like we heard in 1 Thessalonians 4. We do not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. I held those promises in my heart. But all I wanted to say in that moment was, I love you, Grandpa. And so I said it. And Grandpa opened his eyes and he looked into mine. I love you too, Danny boy. And so I ran my hands through the few gray strands of hair left on his head and I slipped quietly out of the room. Some months later, after the funeral, my grandmother, Verna, Grandpa's bride, opened up his closet door to see if there was anything there to fit me. I was much taller than Grandpa, so nothing came close to fitting. But then I saw this beautiful leather belt. Though the original notches left the belt hanging much too loose on me, I, I took it knowing that I could cut out a few notches and wear it anyway, which I did for many years. And as Grandma and I stood there meandering through the closet and his belongings, Grandma began to talk to me about his life, a life that she characterized as faithful. For 60 years, he'd been faithful to Grandma. Ever since that day, they eloped. And one of his, uh, most of his life, you know, he worked hard doing physical labor in a foundry that took its toll on his body and his health. And he raised a family through the Depression years like he raised his vegetables in the small garden behind the garage with much tender care. So every time I look at Grandpa's belt, I think of faithfulness, and I want to be just like him so that someday when someone is rummaging through my closet and reflecting on my life, they may characterize this little old sinful self in the same way as faithful. A faithfulness that is about being present, showing up when you said you wouldn't, taking care of what you have, beginning with the little things, you know, like those leather boots Grandpa took such good care of. It reminded me of what Jesus said. He who is faithful in a little is faithful in much. And Jesus would know because he was faithful to us in all things. And he lived faithfulness to its final conclusion for you and for me. He was faithful in the desert and on the brink of starvation and in the presence of temptation. 
He is faithful when all his beloved disciples, those who once said to him that they would stay awake and that they would lay down their lives for him, would do neither, only to run away into the darkness. Jesus was faithful to them when they denied knowing him, like Peter did three times in the courtyard. He was faithful when they beat him up and ridiculed him and flogged him and made him carry his own cross to Calvary. He was faithful when they nailed him to a cross like a common criminal. And at the end of his life, it is his faithfulness that would become our salvation as Jesus was faithful to forgive us all of our sins and then lay down his life in our place. We who, like the disciples and the five bridesmaids, were not ready. We all know the place, that place of darkness because we've all been there. It's not that God puts us there. Sin puts us there. Not being ready puts us there. Not living into God's will puts us there. But the good news is, God does not leave us there. Why? Because God is faithful. He comes to us just like he did that evening when three days after his death, the disciples were cowering in the dark in this locked room where Jesus comes to them and says, don't be afraid before blowing his life and his Holy Spirit into them. I don't think Jesus tells us the parable for today to make us afraid or to scare us straight. But he does encourage us to be faithful as we wait for his return. And what does that faithfulness look like that makes us ready for his coming in Ephesians 6, the Apostle Paul answers that question when he writes, put on the belt of faithfulness to wear as your own. Because it is God's faithfulness that is the belt that God gives to us in his beloved son, Jesus Christ, after he died. A belt that we can grow into because in Jesus we now live into God's love and mercy and grace so that at the end of our life, though poor and needy we are, we may hear those blessed words from him. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little and I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your salvation. Glory be to Christ. Amen.
we stand in body or spirit as we respond to God's word with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please pray with me. God, you take a leap of faith to love us and to choose us. God, give us good courage to follow you, even in our foolishness. Give us strength to love you and our neighbors and to live as generous people. Merciful God, receive our prayer. And God of faith, you draw us together. We thank you for the generations who built this church, prayed for its ministry, and gave to its mission. We pray for today's congregation, for the foundations of faith that you are building in each one of us. Help us to love you. Help us to love each other. And we pray for those who will be here in the future. We pray for those moving to Dilworth and surrounding areas. We pray for friends and neighbors who struggle with faith. We pray for children. Holy Spirit, lead people to you. Help them to know the freedom and the good news of Jesus. Merciful God. And Almighty God. We commend to your gracious care in keeping all the men and women of our armed services, both those at home and abroad. Defend them by day with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Give them courage to face the perils that surround them. And grant them a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be. Merciful God, receive our prayer. And God, we pray for those who mourn. We pray for your loving arms to surround those, and we ask for comfort for those who've lost loved ones. Today, we especially pray for those in need of your care. We lift our voices in prayer for Andrea, Michelle, Valerie, Gail, Doug, Elsie, Jan, Tom, Lorna, Dale, Charlotte, Leonard, Marcia, Ron, Gunner, Sarah, Mary, and Jody. God, we thank you for your faithfulness, and we ask you to help us to be faithful to you in the small things and the large. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share signs of peace with one another. Please be seated as we worship God with our offering.
Let's pray together. God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table so that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And Lord, keep teaching us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Please be seated.
And now may the God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the spirit who lives in you bless you now and forever. Go in peace. God is at work in you.